Welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday of Easter. It's fun to still remember and be celebrating the fact that our Redeemer does live uh, today and every day. So I uh, want to start with just a few announcements for you. For those that uh, uh, won one of the auction bids but has not yet picked up your basket, I have them so you can see me after church and uh, we'll get that to you. Um, and thank you to everybody who donated uh, baskets, who bid on the baskets, who shared their talents, who helped in any way. We had a really fantastic fundraiser and raised uh, $3,215 for our youth fund, which is fantastic. <clears throat> so different from uh, we've been raising money for our national youth gathering, that silent auction is our annual, our, sort of our big fundraiser for our general youth fund that we use to offset camp costs, um, to be able to go out and do fun things together like escape rooms or whatever else uh, for us to have pizza and snacks when we have a lock-in, all of those types of things and all the various things that we use. So thank you so much for supporting our youth in that way. Uh, after service <clears throat> today, we'll have uh, some fellowship time and the coffee hour. And then we'll have the last uh, Sunday of our series teaching about world religions. And today we're going to be hearing about Hinduism. So if you would like to stay and uh, be part of that faith formation today, I encourage you, invite you to stay for that. Next Sunday, uh, we'll be honoring our high school seniors that will be graduating uh, this year. So uh, please come and know that we'll have a little reception for them afterward um, next week. All right, the rest of the announcements are in the bulletin. Please take a look at all of those. And uh, let's take just a moment of silence as we take in a deep breath of the Holy Spirit and prepare our hearts for our worship this morning. As you're able, I invite you to please stand. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Now receive this promise. Almighty God has mercy on you, forgives you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. He strengthens you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keeps you in eternal life, amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. Oh 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We have not seen the risen Christ, but we see him in the lives of those We have not seen Jesus face to face. We have not touched the wounds from the cross. The Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And I invite our children up for a children's message. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, come on up. Hi. All right. So I have a question for all of you. Okay. So I want to I want to hear who who is it that you live with? Who do you live with? Yes. My mom. You live with mom, dad? My brother. Okay. Brother. And, and cats and and a leopard gecko. Okay, all right. And soon to be a little sister. <laughs> Breaking news! Woohoo! All right. Who else wants to say? Who do you live with? Yes. Okay. Mom. Grandparents, non-biological dad. And my two cats. Two cats. And the dog. 
Oh, and the dog. Okay, how about you? Mom and dad, two dogs and one cat. All right. There's lots of moms and dads. Is it all the same mom and dad that you live with? Each one has a different, they just have the same name, right? But they're all different. Yes. You know what? When you live somewhere, wherever it is that you live, that's called, that's where you abide. That's kind of a fancy word for just the place you live. You, like home. Yes, that's where you abide. You abide at home. Yeah. So one of the things that we're going to hear in the scriptures today is you're going to hear the word abide over and over and over. And every time you hear the word abide today as we're reading, abide, abide yeah, I want you to raise your hand, okay? So every time you hear the word abide, you're going to go, ooh, and look at mom and dad and be like, wow, did you hear that? Because there's a lot of it. Your arms will be tired. But the reason that we're talking about abiding is because abiding is where we have the things that we need. So I want to know who um, at your house, do you get to eat food? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you get to drink water? Yes. We need those Yes. Do you have all of the things? You need those to survive. See, you're catching on. That's exactly what I'm after, right? All of the things that we need in the place that we've been given to abide, we also have the things that we need to grow, right? So I'm going to try something right now. I want all of you to stand up. Let's stand up right where you are. Okay, <clears throat> I want you to grab yourself by your ears, just like this, grab your ears, grab your ears, okay, now I want you to lift up, lift as high as high you can, all right, who got taller? <laughs> Did you get a little taller? Very good, mostly because we straightened out our posture probably, right? We can't just grab our ears and make ourselves grow up, right? We grow because in the places where we abide, where God has given us, we have all of the things that we need to grow. We have people who care for us. We eat good food. We have all the things that we need, right? So we want to remember that we abide in God as well. And God also provides the things that we need to continue growing in faith. So let's have a quick prayer, okay? God, we thank you that you abide with us and we abide with you just as you have given us homes and people who love us to raise us and help us to grow. We know that you abide with us to help us grow in our faith every day. And in Jesus' name, we give thanks to you. Amen. All right, keep growing, okay? All right. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 8. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading from the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humili humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak. And starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them 
Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of John, chapter 4. <clears throat> Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfect in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God who they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. We stand as you are able for our gospel acclamation. According to John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm seeing hands going up and down. I'm about to lose my place in there. <laughs> I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. Most of you know that uh, in my first call where I served, 
Uh, we had uh, twin devastating tornadoes that came through town and took 100% uh, of our businesses down and about 80% of our houses. Uh, this week, the storms and all that has gone by has hit a little close to home for me. And uh, it's sitting right about here. And uh, in the areas that were hit on Friday and um, beyond in these last couple of days, um, I have family that also have been in the towns and in the places that have been hit. And uh, it's, it's one of those times that I look around and I think, what does this mean to abide in God when we have this type of devastation that's happening? Of course, I'm thinking about branches, and um, funny enough, one of the most triggering, that's kind of a fancy word for saying, the unexpected response of <gasps> like having emotions come out unexpectedly, is when I see a tree that no longer has branches and leaves, because that was the first thing that I remember seeing walking through town immediately after the tornado in Pilger. I think that it's amazing the way that people come together in the midst of disasters like this. It's almost as if God knew what he was talking about when he talks about abiding together. Because our natural gut response is to immediately come together and talk about what it means to be living and abiding in a space it might not be individual homes, but here, right now, I saw yesterday on Facebook, before it had even been 24 hours, I already saw the t-shirts that were for sale with the great big N for Nebraska and the saying, we'll stick together in all kinds of weather. You can get those for $24.99 on the best of Big Red, in case you're wondering about that. Nebraska strong, Bellevue strong, Elkhorn strong, and so on. This is what we do, is we gather and we remember that we are all together. This is what abiding is. And we're drawn to it in the hardest of times, naturally. God is the one who first gives us this image and gives us the spirit that draws our heart in such a way to want to come together. The phrase that I often use and have used in the last 10 years since my experience with a devastating tornado is life-giving. I kind of came across that phrase accidentally as people were asking me, what do you see God doing when you look around at all of this devastation. It was a surprise to me that these words came out of my mouth, which means that it wasn't me anyway, it was probably the Holy Spirit. I said, I see resurrection. I see all of the places where people are bringing life, where it looks like there's only death here. Because I saw so many people holding each other up. I saw so many people coming to help. I saw plenty of gawkers too, but you know, that's human nature, as much as it is to come together. We have the ability to be life-giving. And we don't experience just in these times after destruction. I'm sure you experienced the same things in Bellevue after the floods that you recognized what it is for a community to come together and to see where life is being brought in to the places that feel like there isn't any. This is what it is. Life together can be life giving. Last week, I talked about what it is to have a good shepherd that gives us life. 
talking about how sheep do not aspire toward anything. They just live into being sheep. And what a beautiful gift that is to rest in that space. Sheep abide. They don't aspire. They abide. There's no teenager sheep. You know, the ones that get really restless and they just want to make it on their own and they just make their way out and go out and do their own thing. There's no such thing. Sheep are always the young that know that they are held in a space where they are cared for, where what they need is provided to them. Sheep do not aspire. Sheep abide. So we've already been living, hopefully, in this space from last week until now of knowing that we can rest in the space of what it is to be called a sheep. And Jesus today gives us another image that is actually speaking the exact same truth to us. A branch is dependent on the vine. The vine is not dependent on a branch. <laughs> it is not a mutual dependency. A branch is dependent on the vine. All of life is one directional, from the vine to the branch, through the branch that bears fruit to the world that needs it. It's always one directional. A branch grows as it is fed. So what exactly does a branch do then? Yeah, all of those things, but not by yourself. A branch in and of itself does nothing. <laughs> nothing. Just like the sheep, they eat and sleep. That's it. And yet, are so cared for and tended to. The branch in and of itself does nothing. The vine feeds the branch to grow. The vine produces the fruit through the branch. It is not the branch's work to bear fruit. I want you to hear that again. The vine produces fruit through the branch. It is not the branch's work to create the fruit. You can rest in that. We think, oh, he wants us to bear fruit. What is all the fruit that I can bear? And then we start to fertilize ourselves, and just like you think, you're right. Most of it is, well, I won't say the word out loud, whatever word you want to put in for fertilizer. <laughs> the branch does not even fertilize itself as much as we think that we want to grow something, make something happen. We produce fruit because the vine is working through us. Apart from the vine, we can do nothing. Even abiding is not a work that we do. It is a truth that we hold. Abiding is not a work that we do. It is a state of being that is just true of who we are. <laughs> That's okay. She was writing notes and her... <laughs> that sounded ominous. So like, da -da. <laughs> that was not an ominous saying. This is true. It can feel ominous for us to hear <laughs> that we have no power within ourselves, but actually it is a gift it is a gift. Jesus says it this way. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. 
Now we think that we hear these words and we're like, now I have to go and do the things to abide and to grow fruit and to do all of these things. And Jesus is telling his disciples, here's the deal. You have already been cleansed. This is a truth about you. This is the state of being that you are currently in. This is not something that we aspire toward. It is simply true. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you, Jesus says. So live in that. Rest in it. That's the next word he says. So abide in me, just like I abide in you. Also a statement of fact and truth. This is not, I'm giving you something to do. I'm telling you, here's what's true. Now breathe and rest. You don't even have to hold on because he's the one who holds on to you. Stay in this truth, he says, which is what abiding means. It means to stay or to remain. To, you're already in a place and you're just remaining in that place. To rest in it to be true to something, to persevere. This is what abiding is, to just be in that place, just as it is to be a sheep who has a good shepherd. It is already true, and you rest in that truth. Now he tells you, here's the same thing. If that picture didn't work for you, maybe this one will. <laughs> it's always the same story. You have already been cleansed by the word that I gave to you. You are already part of me. Stay there, just as I am staying with you. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I remain in them. There, much fruit grows. Fruit for the world. For the people who on this day feel as if there is no fruit. That word that Jesus gives us is not an if-then statement. If you do this, then this will happen. If you take nothing else from this sermon, I want you to take that. You have already been cleansed. This is not an if-then statement. It is a true statement about who you are and the state of your being. Abide in me, rest there, live there, hang out there, and sigh. Let go of all of the things that we feel that we must try to hold so tightly to and trust that the power of the vine is enough to bring life through you to those who need it. This is the life in Christ. Not striving to be more or to be better. Not even hanging on for dear life. Instead, it is to be fed. It is to be held. It is to be comforted, made new, to be empowered, to be life-giving because of his work through you. And of course, it is to be at peace. Rest, abide in Christ. You're already there. <laughs> Just be there. Just as he abides in you. He is there holding you close and working through you for the sake of the world. 
May we go and take that life everywhere we go to see resurrection in all the places that need it. Amen.
Please rise as you are able and join me in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated if you wish for the prayers. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers, and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always, God of grace. For the well-being of the earth and of all created things, renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness, God of grace. For the nations and all those in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, and for international organizations, that justice and peace may reign. God of grace. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering in any way, God of grace. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, and for all who seek to share your love with the world, God of grace. We pray for those affected by the tornadoes in Nebraska and Iowa. May they feel your loving arms around them as they recover. With thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors, help us, like them, to bear much fruit and to become your disciples. And at the last, bring us to that heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table, God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord, Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we also pray for all of the first responders, for those who are going to tend and care for the many people who have need in the next uh, weeks and months, um, for insurance adjusters, for uh, car repairmen, for people with chainsaws, for all that comes along um, bringing life into a place where destruction has happened. Uh, lift all of them up, keep them safe, and we give thanks to you and for the call uh, to care in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
seated for the offering. pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. Thanks be to you. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, and he gave it to all to drink saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord is the host of this meal, and you are welcome at the table. You may be seated, and I invite my communion helpers forward.
let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him as he is in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. As you're able, I invite you to stand for the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. news.